In the previous episode of this documentary, we mentioned Kipchak Turks who have been living in Poland, Lithuania and Belarus for centuries. In other words, Polish and Lithuanian Tatars, their histories and the reason why they have migrated to these lands. We also gave examples of Lithuanian Tatars' villages, daily lives and culture. In this episode, we will visit Poland. We will be guests at Polish Tatars' houses and learn about their culture and traditions. Polish Tatars came to this region 600 years ago during the era of Great Lithuania Princedom, either escaping from the fights for the throne in the Golden Horde dynasty or having been taken captive in the wars with Lithuania. And the Great Lithuania Princedom has made benefit of this situation to use these newcomers as soldiers. Tatars have gained various rights and lands engaging all wars at the side of Lithuanians. Tatars lost their language belonging to the Kipchak Turk group in the midst of the 16th century. I think there are two main reasons of it. First reason is their being Muslims. As you know, the prayers and ritual worships are in Arabic language. And Tatars have prayed and performed the Salat in Arabic language in their mosques. So, from religious aspects, they haven't considered it necessary to preserve their language. Second reason is their joining forces with the king voluntarily. So they have established close relationships with the local people and they have started to being Polishificated from generation to generation. Polish and Lithuanian Turks, although not knowing their native tongue, have been able to preserve their identity in a Catholic Christian community for centuries by means of Islam. Today, the Tatar population in Poland is around 5,000, in Belarus is around 11,000, and in Lithuania is around 5,200. Tatars predominantly live in Sokolka, Bohoniki, Kruzniniani, Bialostok, Gdansk and Wielkopolska regions of Poland. These Tatar settlements near Bialostok city in the east of Poland are introduced to the tourists as Sızlak Tatarski, meaning the Tatar road. Bohoniki is one of the most important villages of Polish Tatars. Small and pretty houses amongst the vast greenery, reminding the ones in the fairy tales of sheltered Polish Turks for centuries. The mosques in this region, having been built in the typical Polish house and church architecture, can be considered as the most interesting and charming edifices of the Islamic world. From the outside, it is difficult to understand that this building is a mosque. But the crescent on top of the smallest minaret of the world signifies that it is a holy building constructed for Islam. These mosques eliminate the symbols and shapes of the mosques in our minds. We understand once more that image isn't important when religious service is concerned. Tangible things are nothing, but intangible things are everything. Uh, 
No matter where in Poland they die, all the Muslims are buried in the cemeteries of these villages. A community house in Bohoniki. In front of it there is a plaquette representing 300th year of Tatars coming to Bohoniki. The past of this village finds meaning in this plaquette. The horses around the house seem like they are on the legendary Tatar riders trail. In Bohoniki, where the houses have been built suitable for harsh winter conditions, 3,000 people were living before the Second World War, but today its population is only 250. Salam Я не ведомый. Вы мешкаете в тыщи? А. Дядок про дядок. This is our grandfather's time. This is our village. We have a lot of children, but they scattered around. Our daughter is in London. One of our sons is in Spain, and the other is in military service. They dispatched their Tatars all around the world. We didn't dispatch them. The government did. It doesn't create jobs for young people. So they go abroad, leaving their parents alone. We educated them all. My daughter married a Catholic. She wasn't earning much. So she went to England to make money. She has been living there for three years. Her husband is Polish. I am visually impaired, so I haven't been working for one year. I am engaged in farming. We have land, we have cows and geese. Do your calves produce too much milk? Yes, they produce, but we earn only one euro for eight liters, which is pittance. Kruzyniany is another important village where Polish Tatars lived for centuries. The village mosque, which was built in the 18th century, reflects the characteristics of the architecture of the houses in the region. It is a small minaret and it is still in service. At the beginning of the 21st century, Poland became the member of the European Union and gave the Muslims the liberty of selecting their muftis and creating the conditions for worship. But the Polish state doesn't subsidize the religious activities, so the money needed is funded by the communities. Currently in Bohoniki, Kruziniani and Gdansk, there are three mosques open to prayer. In Kruziniani, we came across a lovely old woman. Her face looks familiar. It reminded us of our grandmothers. How old are you? I was born in 1922, in a village near Dobrova. There were three Tatar families living there. This is the copy of a section of the Quran. We call it Mühür. It came from Turkey. My husband and I. It has been here for 30 years. In Kruzniani village, there is a restaurant and camping named as Tatarland, run by a Tatar family. 
Here, Cennet Hanım and her husband Emir Bey preserve and keep alive their culture via business. They cook traditional Tatar food in the restaurant and serve them to their guests from Poland and from all around the world. The delicious Tatar dishes and pastries prepared by Cennet Hanım have become so famous countrywide and the walls of the restaurant have been covered by the award letters. Ours is a noble family and this house has been given to the Bogdanovich family during Sobieski era. The head of our family is my husband Miroslav Emir Bogdanovich. My name is Janet Bogdanovich. We have three daughters. The eldest one is Cemile, who is sitting next to me. Our doors are open to the tourists. This is the only place where they can be with us, learning our history and tasting our foods. Tatar dishes are a part of our diminishing traditions. One of the foods on the table is Pierre Kazievnik. This is a pastry filled with meat, cheese or apple. And this one is pelemeç. It is made in basket form, though it's fried in deep oil. Our national dish kuldun has been made for centuries by Tatar families by a recipe which hasn't changed since the time of our ancestors. We started to join the contests and won awards. With our potato pie and potato stuff intestines, we won World Championship Prize. Then we were awarded in a competition organized by Polish tourism organization with Kuldun and Pierre Kazievnik. I am hopeful about Tatar's future. We have managed to be in existence for centuries. We will exist in the next centuries too. Our traditions have been kept for this long. We try to preserve them with our dishes and the meetings such as Tatar balls. The youngsters join these balls every year. We keep in contact via the internet. Our children attend religious courses. Not only the children, but youngsters and adults too. When they are in class, we discuss different subjects. I think we will carry on. I keep in touch with my Tatar friends. We attend religious classes together. We communicate via internet. As my father said, we meet at the balls. We go to the cinema at nights. I'm proud of being a Tatar. I'm not ashamed of it. In the past, I thought it might be annoying. But now, I don't think that it's embarrassing. It is our pride. We are educated in this religion not in another religion. Our parents pass down their knowledge to us as well as they can. <laughs> All Tatars in Poland are the members of the Tatar Association of Republic of Poland, centered in Gdansk, and which is engaged in important activities to preserve and keep alive their culture. Also, a quarterly magazine named as The Islamic Life has been published since 1986 under the directorship of the head of the Tatar Association, Selim Haspievich. This magazine, giving various information about Tatar culture and history, is very important for Tatars in order to communicate with each other and acquaint themselves with their culture. Besides the magazine, the association has also published books on Islam and Tatar history and some religious books. In the magazine named as Almanac of Polish Tatars, which has been published since 1993, there are scientific and literary articles about the social and cultural problems of Tatars. Another magazine is published in Sokolka named as The World of Islam, giving place to the articles about Muslims and Tatars' daily lives. 
Collaborating with the Tatars in Belarus and Lithuania too, Mufti Tomas Miskiewicz is a spiritual leader of Muslims in Poland. The Muslim Association in Bialystok, where a large number of Tatars live, gives religious lectures to them. Traditions and folk dances are taught here too. Ours is the biggest religious community in Poland. We use a building allocated by the municipality. We perform Friday prayers and Bayram prayers in the Feast of Sacrifice and Ramadan there. The students are given religious education too. But when there are too much students, we have difficulties because we don't have enough room. Since we live in a Christian country, we want to prepare our children to be able to face Christianity. My name is Elvira Miskewicz. I have been dancing with this group for four years. I like it very much. We come together with our Tatar friends here. We travel across Poland. First, we were reciting poems, then we started to learn the dances. That is how our group was formed. There are 30 persons in our group. We wanted to improve ourselves and demonstrate our culture. Levize taught us how to dance. We still continue to learn from videos. Music is sent to us from Crimea. We are invited to the exhibitions about Tatars. The Muslim community of Bohoniki organizes summer camps to make the children and the youngsters get to know each other, their culture and religion. Although they have lost their language, Polish Tatars have been celebrating their religious festivals according to their traditions and rules of the religion for 600 years. In festive days, we go to Bohoniki Mosque. Also, we visit the cemetery, we give alms, we get together with our relatives, we prepare our national dishes and serve them to each other. We teach the rules of our religion to our children. Which Tatar dishes do you cook for Bayrams? Primarily, we cook kuldun, which is a kind of pastry filled with meat. And then, stuffed cabbage leaves. The wedding ceremonies have completely changed under the influence of Polish culture, and now they are made according to the Polish traditions.
But besides the civil marriage, imam marriage is done too. Funeral ceremonies are also done by religious traditions and regardless where he dies in Poland, a Tatar is absolutely buried in a Muslim cemetery. Tatars show utmost attention to their cemeteries, maintaining and cleaning them periodically. My mother, my father and my husband's parents are all buried here. We have other relatives in the cemetery and also my brother. We come here a few times annually to clean the graves. On the gravestones, both Muslim and Polish names of the dead person are written. And on all of them, there is a star and crescent motif. Tatars believe that if the gravestones of their ancestors were to be ruined, rugged or lost, Polish Tatars would also be annihilated. They say, a nation that doesn't have a past won't have a future too. As we agreed before, in Bohoniki, we met with Turkologist Professor Hendrik Jankowski from Adam Mishkiewicz University in Poznan and his students. They were making research studies about the historical Tatar graves and almost all of them speak a little Turkish. The aim of these studies is to educate the Turkology students on historical Turkic gravestones. My name is Radoslav Andrzejewski. I am 20 years old. I am studying at Turkology department in Adam Mishkiewicz University in Poznan. We are learning Turkish and Kazakh language. They have a lot of differences. But I think learning Turkish is easier. My father is Turk. My mother is Polish. So, I'm interested in Turkology, and I'm studying in this department. We came here to see the Tatars and get to know them, since we study Turkology. They are very close to us. We came to see how they live and learn, how they have lived in the past. Our group is from Turkic, Mongolian and Korean languages department. The Turkology department has been established in 2002. I mean, it's a very new department, but we have plans and projects. As you know, we have studies on all kinds of Kipchak Turkic languages and even Khorezmian and Chaatai Turkic languages. I chose Turkology department randomly, but now I am very glad about it. Because we learn interesting subjects. Thanks to my department, I learned Turkish and Kazakh language. I finished my second year in Turkology department. And I came back from Turkey yesterday. I have been there for holiday. Why did I choose Turkology? Because I like Turkish very much. That was the only reason. This excavation work done by Poznan Adam Mishkevich University is carried on in Kruzniniani Cemetery and other historical Tatar cemeteries too.
been 1751 year uh, in Old uh, Polish. Augustos, yani Augustos, August 4th Zofia, Zofia uh, is the name of yani the woman. It says that in the year 72 she left this world. This gravestone has been made in 1699 and it is the oldest gravestone found in Krushniani. Imam Ibn Hüseyin Aleksandrovich. This was the name of the village's Imam. While we were working here, we also tried to educate our Turkology students. We examined the writings on the gravestones. I hope such studies will be done in Turkey too. Our team tried to give support them for this historical excavation. But they got tired soon and decided to continue what they do best. <laughs> the oldest Muslim cemetery of the region is located in Stadzians. Although Tatars don't live here anymore, these graves are the witnesses of their past. The person uh, I meant is uh, uh, General Yusuf Bielak. He died in uh, 1794. General Yusuf B. El Haq died in 1794. He was the most famous Tatar commandant of Polish army in the second half of the 18th century. During the period when the relations between Poland and Russia have been tense, he has won victories against Russian army. He is known as a great defender of independence of Poland. Uh, unknown, or uh, we knew that. His grave was unknown, but we know that he has been born in Studianka and his home was there. But three years ago, we came across to this gravestone, and so now we know that this is the burial place of General Yusuf Bielhak. The Tatars living in Lithuania and Poland know and love us. They have been in close relationship with the Ottoman Empire and Republic of Turkey for centuries. Although hundreds of years have passed, and although they are thousands of kilometers away, they haven't lost their Muslim identity, and so they have been able to preserve their national identity too. We have been living here for 600 years. I wish we will exist for 600 years more. Don't forget the Tatars living in Lithuania. Give the Polish Tatars regards to the Muslims in Turkey and especially to Istanbul. We send our greetings to everyone in Turkey from Bohoniki. Lithuanian, Polish and Belarus Tatars from where we have separated due to various reasons centuries ago. In other words, the Kipchak Turks will surely continue their existence on the stage of the history for many centuries to come.